Raider Nation, what's going on? It's Mitchell Ryan, your host of the Raiders Report, and today's show is presented by Manscaped. Had to wear my guy Ty Bones Davis, because you know what? You got that middle name of Bones, and you know for a fact he's using Manscaped. And if you want to be like him, code Raiders, Manscaped.com. If anybody didn't get lucky on Valentine's Day, then you definitely need to go down in the comments and in the description of today's show. Coming up here are the top three free agents that the Raiders should sign in 2024 NFL free agency. Every single offseason, I always say, Raiders could target this guy. This guy being an intriguing dude to target as well. I'm going to say right now, if you told me, Mitch, you can only sign three free agents, who would they be? And this is not going to be just the three best guys out there. No, I'm going to try to allocate my money in a smart way, not putting my team in a crippling position. So here are going to be the top three agents that I would target. Current cap space at the time that I'm recording this video is $43.37 million. That's 11th most in the National Football League. Las Vegas has 56 players signed. That's the 12th most. So they still have obviously plenty of additions that they're going to need. And with that first round draft slot at 13, you can still go out and address a multiple, multiple positions. But the reason why I am going to sign the players that I am looking out and signing is because I know that I'm going to have enough money to make this move, and I'm also not going to cripple my roster and be able to build more depth. As it stands right now, the Raiders' needs are this to me. Number one's quarterback. That's the number one spot here, and I'm just going to say, spoiler alert, you're not going to see a QB on this show that I'm going to sign. Number two is defensive tackle. Number three is offensive tackle. At number four is corner, and at number five is offensive guard. If you're looking for Raiders videos all day, every day, Raiders analysis plus the latest news, rumors, when the Raiders sign an offensive coordinator, or maybe when they hire two of them, we'll go live for it, right? We're going to be live for the NFL draft. We're going to be live for free agency. I know some people, when they hear subscribe, they think you got to pay. You don't. 100% free. Subscribe. Watch the show for a week. If you don't like it after a week, how about this? Unsubscribe. Though, this week, at least give me two weeks because I'm on vacation. We really turn up when we go live here on the show. Let's go to the first person that I am going to sign. It's Christian Wilkins at defensive tackle. And I do want to just say this. It's not that I'm saying Christian Wilkins over everyone else. I put Wilkins on the show because he is the most likely to sign with the Raiders out of the big name defensive tackles, in my opinion, because his connection with Rob Leonard. But, like, let's get it straight here. Las Vegas absolutely positively needs to be able to add a big man on the interior, whether that's Matabuke, whether that's Chris Jones, Leonard Williams, Reader. I don't care who it is. You need to add somebody. And when I think about the best year that Wilkins has had, he's coming off a hell of a year with nine and a half sacks. He did a hell of a job in 2021 with Rob Leonard. Four and a half sacks, 17 games played. Like, to me, he's a great locker room fit. And you got to be able to replace John Jenkins. Bilal Nichols, Adam Butler, hell, Maybe John Jenkins can call up his old buddy and say, Wilkins, I really think you're going to love playing here, playing with this team. I had a career year myself. And on top of why you just got to sign a defensive tackle, it's take pressure off this guy. The Raiders put him in a tough spot. Chandler Jones put him in a tough spot. Josh McDaniels put him in a tough spot. But he got better and better and better as the year went on. There's no disputing that. And why I want the Raiders to go big and sign a defensive tackle is because not only is it your biggest need on the defensive side of the football. Not only do I believe that games are won and lost in the trenches, it's also how Patrick Graham's system works, and you take pressure off Tyree Wilson. So you could have Christian Wilkins on the interior, who's a phenomenal locker room dude. If you haven't seen Hard Knocks, watch it. Christian Wilkins might be your favorite player from that show. But 10 tackles for loss, 65 tackles. If you're able to add that, that takes pressure off Crosby. It takes pressure off Malcolm Coons. If you've watched this show this offseason, it's no secret that I want the Raiders to go get a DT. So the contract projection that you're going to see here from PFF, and it's based on what they believe these players are going to get, I do think that $20, $21 million is probably going to be in the vicinity of Wil what Wilkins ends up getting. The reason why I think he takes a one-year prove-it deal, and I'm glad PFF has that on there, is because of how good the defensive tackle group is this year. Like With a guy like Chris Jones, with a guy like Justin Matabuke, they are probably the better overall coveted players. If he's able to ball out on a one-year prove-it deal, he might get an even bigger payday than next season. So how about this? Get in the comments right now. Name the Raiders' top free agent target this offseason. If you answer any of the top defensive tackles, I'm in because that's where I'm spending my big-time money. I am allocating one player that's not a quarterback over $20 million of a payday this year, and I believe it deserves to be a defensive tackle. However, I want to know what you guys have to say down below. So again, top 
players that I'm looking to sign for the Las Vegas Raiders, and I'm not going to go super, super crazy on the salary cap. I've already spent big at the defensive tackle spot. If you're wondering, Mitch, well, who are your top DTs this year? Well, here they are. I do have Matabuke at number one. However, the way that I did this exercise, he would have been too expensive with some of the other players that I would have ended up signing. Like, if I would have had to sign Chris Jones, well, then I wouldn't have been able to get the next two players that I believe the Las Vegas Raiders absolutely positively need to focus on this offseason. So coming up next here is going to be my next player, and it's going to be on the offensive side of the football, and it's another big-time Raider need, and here's something that all of y'all need. You all need Manscaped. How many guys out there got lucky on Valentine's Day? Did you? You can be honest with me. If you didn't, then you need to go to manscaped.com and get 20% off and free shipping. If there's any ladies out there that were like, I uh, went down there, and let's just say it was not what you were hoping for, then you should also get your man some Manscaped products. Whether you're going for a trim or that clean shaven look, this trimmer has you covered. Trusted by over 10 million men worldwide, now is your time to get a grip on your grooming with our exclusive offer. Get 20% off and free shipping with code Raiders at Manscaped.com. Embrace a new you and definitely embrace a new trimmer courtesy of Manscaped. And to me, I love all their products. The Lawnmower 5.0 is an absolute game changer and just because I'm worried, I am in Paris right now, just so all y'all know at the time that I am, that y'all are watching this video, I'll be in Paris. I don't want Alex doing any Eiffel Tower stuff with anybody that's not me. So that's why I definitely made sure that I brought my carrying case from Manscaped. And if you're like me, you got to be prepared. It's all about performance. And that's why you can also get the performance package here. It comes with the best freaking boxers you've ever worn. You're going to be able to get some ball deodorant. Bottom line, if your armpits stink... I'm going to guess that your ball sack stinks as well. So one more time here, it's promo code Raiders at manscaped.com. That link's going to be available to you all down in the comments and down in the description of today's show. If you lost your girlfriend or significant other on Valentine's Day because you didn't go to Manscaped, I don't want you to have to hunt her down. So let's talk about Robert Hunt right now at offensive guard. Had a big time season for the Miami Dolphins this past season. And when you think about what the Raiders need, they need a right guard. And if you want to go cheap, maybe you decide to bring back Greg Van Roten. He is 34 years old. If you want to spend big and you want to really bolster that offensive line, Hunt's the name that I'm going to keep in mind, who to me continues to get better and better and better. He's only 27 years old at 6'6", 335 pounds. He is a big old boy up the middle. Did he battle some injury concerns this year? Yes, he played in nine games. He was on the field, though. This dude was... Really freaking good. I'm not talking just in the running game. I'm not just talking in the passing game. He was able to do both those things at a high level. 547 snaps in total. An overall PFF grade of 77.1. And if you're Las Vegas and you're going to spend big at the O-line spot, the reason why I like going offensive guard is because of how deep the offensive tackle group is for the, for the draft. And if you're like, well, Mitch, a lot of those guys are left tackles. To me, Colt Miller has the versatility and ability to also play right tackle if you are in a pinch and you say, well, Colton, you're going to go play right tackle or the dude that you end up drafting potentially at 13 or in the top two rounds. Maybe they have the ability to go play right tackle. Or another one, do you have the confidence in a dude like Thayer Munford to go play right tackle? If I'm going to spend big on the offensive line this season, I'm going to go spend big on Robert Hunt at offensive guard because I think it pairs the best with the overall draft, free agency, and currently what the Raiders have. So PFF's projected contract for Hunt is four years at $17.5 million a year, which is $70 million in total and $42 million guaranteed. Is it a lot of money? Sure, it is. But I want to win in the trenches. And if you're going to either draft a quarterback or add a free agent, like a Kirk Cousins or whatever you end up doing, you better be able to protect them. That I can guarantee you. Speaking of quarterbacks and kind of speaking of Kirk here, should the Raiders sign a free agent QB? Give me a yes or give me a no because how can I make a video about the top three players that the Raiders should sign and not include their biggest need in quarterback? So should the Raiders sign a free agent QB? It depends what you want them to do. If you're answering yes, then to me there's one answer and one answer only. It's Kirk Cousins. And if you're going to go this route, then you're drafting Cousins, and then you're going to draft a QB probably like a Bo Nix, somebody like that, and then you're going to end up going that. I will say another quarterback that's not a free agent yet, and technically you can't sign him, 
yet at the time I'm making this video is Russell Wilson. However, I, indicating by all reports, it sounds like he's going to get cut. He's going to hit the free agent market, and then that's another route that you could end up going. To me, though, I don't want the Raiders to sign a free agent quarterback. I don't want them to allocate over $30 million of their salary cap to a QB. If it's up to me, I figure out a way to trade up into the top three and get one of my top three quarterbacks. If that's unable to happen, you can't get Jaden Daniels, Drake May, or Caleb Williams, then to me, your next best options are signing Russell Wilson, signing Kirk Cousins, and then drafting a dude like Bo Nix in round two. That would be my option for the Raiders. Let's go to the final player here, and I went a little cheaper. And I'm going to go cheaper here with Adoree Jackson because I know a few times I've thrown out names that are good fits in Patrick Graham's defense, and I feel like I'm really good at this. So to me, I'm going to look for another dude that I believe is going to take a one-year prove-it deal. I like one-year prove-it deals with Antonio Pierce. I like one-year prove-it deals with Patrick Graham. And Adoree Jackson battled some injuries, and his battle injuries essentially his entire career. However, over the past three years, he's been able to stay much more healthy. He had 63 tackles last season on the New York Giants in a very, very bad season for New York in general. But Amik Robertson's going to be a free agent. And you got Nate Hobbs, you got Jack Jones. There's some other solid corners in this year's draft, which I know that the Raiders are going to be looking at. And to me, I'm going to bring in Jackson because of that one-year prove-it deal theory. And the last time that he played with Patrick Graham, he had a career year in 2021. No doubt the injuries have limited him, but he can play inside. He can play outside. He has that versatility that Las Vegas absolutely covets. And if this PFF projected contract is correct, where it only costs you $7 million, I'm freaking in, man. Like, I have enough confidence in Antonio Pierce. I have enough confidence in Patrick Graham where when they do something this offseason on the defensive side of the football, I'm going to trust it. Like, I'm going to trust that you earned my trust last year. Until you break that trust, I have to do nothing but trust you. And if you're able to bring in all three of these players, that's going to cost, again, based off of what PFF projects, at $45.5 million. But, Mitch, you started the show saying that the Raiders had only $43 million in salary cap space. I am aware of what I said. And Las Vegas is going to be able to allocate money in certain areas. They're going to be able to move money around. And even though the Raiders won't be able to use this money that you're about to see, they're still going to have it by the end of the year. So to me, the Raiders are going to cut Jimmy G. They're going to cut Hunter Renfro. They're going to designate them both as post-June 1st cuts, which means both those players will be able to sign anywhere during free agency. The Raiders will not see $24.68 million until after June 1st, but I'm okay with Las Vegas overspending in free agency, knowing in the back of their mind we're going to have $24.68 million after June 1st.